in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we honor you. You represent the presence of God in our midst. Oh, yes, Lord, we honor you. Great is the measure of your royalty in our midst. We acknowledge you because you are mighty. Lord, we bless you. Bless our hearts tonight. Let Jesus be magnified. Let Jesus be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome everybody again tonight, especially for those who have come from far and near. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. It takes love for God to travel all the way down. And for those of you standing outside, we love you, we acknowledge you. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pay attention tonight to what I'm about to teach because I believe that the truth contained in this revelation will set our hearts on fire and will cause us to be instruments of revival, will cause us to be carriers of the anointing. Like Mary said when she was up here, she said the anointing does not make the difference, the anointing is the difference. And in this season of revival, where the fire of God is sweeping across, it's important for us to understand that there is an alignment on our own path. And tonight's teaching is an attempt to position us so that we'll be mightily used by God. Hallelujah. There's nothing more frustrating um, to a man, to a believer, like um, having a prolonged period of work with God without an evidence. I call them consolations of your work with God. Now, I've taught us primarily that we do not seek God for anointing, for cars, for miracles, etc. However, in the process of our work with God, it is important that our lives begin to bear fruit, produce results that motivate us to keep pressing into Him. Hallelujah. And tonight I want to share what I truly believe by the Spirit is the hunger and the questions and the desire in the heart of many people as to why certain people are mightily used by God and others seem not to be used by God or just in little dimensions. I'll be sharing with you something very simple and very profound. So in one minute, I'd like us to pray and say, Lord, open my eyes. Please pray. Everyone, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes that I may see.
Lord, I don't just want to look. I really want to see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just returned from a pastor's conference and um, yesterday was an awesome time. And while I taught in that conference, I felt a need to share some of the things that um, were communicated in that meeting because I believe that is very instrumental. It's, it's a teaching that will respond to our hunger and our desire for God. Hallelujah. Now, many of us at one point or the other have had questions as to why God seems to use certain individuals very mightily. When you look at any territory, you find out that there are certain individuals that um, it seems God is doing business with them as far as the dispensing of his life and power and truth. They seem to be pivot in what God is doing. And yet there are others who are Christians, believers, but they always seem to be out of God's program. It looks like they don't weigh so much as far as the agenda of God is concerned. And this has brought a lot of frustration in the body of Christ because a lot of people have gone into different kinds of spiritual exercises in an attempt to upgrade themselves to become usable. But then I think that the true ingredients required to carry the power of God to be relevant as far as the move of God is concerned many people do not seem to sustain it so i want to just talk on three things and then we'll pray hallelujah i've seen people pray for days and hours hard vigils in an attempt to get the anointing in an attempt to gain spiritual power in an attempt to access the mysteries of the world and while that is not um it's not useless but then for many people, their disappointment is that at the end of all of that program, there is still a void and there is still a barrenness. Are we together now? So they fast. They add fasting to it. I mean, there is no time in the church where men fast and pray as it is right now. Are we together? There are ministries that literally do vigils every day. Every day. Marathon vigils for one month at a stretch yet you watch the quality of the believers that are produced from that experience and it's a cause for concern there are people who are i would call them fasting giants hallelujah and there are people who have stretched their human capacity from border to border i know a man who i prayed for who fasted for seven days dry dry fast i don't mean maybe you take juice later on and then you keep moving dry like nothing touches your mouth not even a toothbrush this is how people have stretched in the spirit in an attempt to be used by god the highest i've seen in my life is someone who fasted for 400 days 400 days non-stop hallelujah i rounded the 400 day with him and i prayed with him but as far as i know that gentleman is still searching desperately for the power of god till now what then is the missing link please pay attention to what i'm about to teach you because for some of you this will be the key that god will hand to you holy 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 Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy
Hallelujah. The latest in the series of the pursuit right now is searching for the vessels that carry the anointing. I mean, once you are anointed, you are in trouble. Everywhere people see you, whether in the market, somewhere, I mean, there are all kinds of skills that are employed from those who fly and hold your leg and say, kill me, but let the anointing drop to those who will drop a seed, those who will use handkerchiefs to clean your shoes. Now, I'm not, I'm not against... Um, the expressions of their passion but i'm saying that people are desperate for the power of god and the glory of god but it looks like god is mising the power it looks like there are people who are saying lord empower me i mean give me this miracle working power this ability and 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 all of that i know so many pastors so many ministers who cry for the grace and the glory of God upon their lives they want his presence to be experienced in their meetings this that I'm about to teach you the Lord taught me 10 years ago as the secret of his sustaining presence and power upon the life of a man the Lord told me to do this and his presence and his power will remain upon my life and by the grace of God I have followed this thoroughly I have struggled to teach what I'm teaching you people this night because I've taught us that it is wasteful to supply information to people who are not spiritually prepared to receive hallelujah while I saw the gentleman who came and said they came all the way from Niger state and the ones from Makodi I am very humble to see what God is doing through these messages within this country and in various parts of the world. But there is a secret to it. This is what I want us to understand. There is nothing that is happening that is a mistake. There's nothing that is happening that is haphazard. And if you will pay attention to what I'm teaching you, please, even those who are working, workers and all of that, do your work, but please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. Hallelujah. So why is the power of God absent? Why is it that God seems to be limited to do business with many people? It looks like, it, it, it seems like one out of every 1,000 or 10,000 are the ones who are really mightily used by God. I used to think that it was because others were carrying out less or more spiritual exercises. But as I've grown in the things of the spirit, I've found out that that's not exactly the reason. Ready for it? Reason number one. Reason number one. I, I, I consider this... I consider this to be the fundamental determinant of the entrance of the anointing and the power of God in the life of a man your motif and your motivation your motif and your motivation let me tell you something I have found out over the years that the state of your heart is the greatest determinant of the power and the glory of God upon your life. Beyond your fasting, beyond your prayer, beyond night vigils, beyond listening to messages, as important as those things are, the state of your heart overrides them all if you want God to do business with you. Now, so many people, well-meaning people, who want to see the miraculous power of God. They want to be mightily used by God. Lack this one thing. The motive and the motivation behind their pursuit is corrupted from beginning. So every activity they carry out is corrupted on the strength of that foundational thing. Are we together? From those who seek God because they want to build a career around ministry. Those who have applied for jobs and it looks like jobs are not forthcoming and they console themselves by saying let's go to the vineyard 
and use ministry to build a career corrupted motives are we together to those who desire the anointing to show their family members that they are not failures you were growing up and they told you that you'll be a failure in life and now you're saying lord give me the anointing to show my mother or my stepmother that i'm not a failure as well-meaning as that motif is it is corrupted are we together now that's the reason why you find certain people they seem not to be engaging in as much spiritual activity in terms of physical exertion fasting prayer but it seems like god has so much interest in them he will go beyond their personal spiritual lives to demonstrate his glory upon their life motif your motivation i can tell you this and i tell you sincerely eight or nine out of every ten pastors and men of god that call me send me text messages sow seeds and are desperately looking for anointing and grace most of them their motives are corrupted are we together so i can go for 40 days fasting but god looks beyond the physical activity and he scans and judges my motive this for me has been the ultimate determinant of the kinds of people that God does business with and that he will do business with in these days. Is God speaking to us? The state of your heart. Let's look at a few scriptures. John chapter 12. Oh come, oh come Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel. Rejoice. Rejoice. Emmanuel has come to us, he's Israel. John chapter 12, it says, And Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, who was raised from the dead, and the Bible says, There they made unto him supper, and Martha served. Follow carefully. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at table. Now let's watch something that happened. And then Mary took a pound of ointment and anointed the feet. The Bible says, okay, took a pound of ointment, of spikenard, pure nard, very costly. Take note. Very costly. Then the Bible says that she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. Are we together? And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And then something happened. Verse 4. And then one of his disciples, a man called Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, he responded to that act of worship. Verse 5. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Now watch this. This is part of Jesus' ministerial cabinet. A woman comes and takes from her alabaster box according to one of the gospels and breaks it before his feet. Pure nerd. The Bible tells us it was her wages for one year. And she took it and broke it at his feet and used her hair that is the glory of a woman to wipe his feet. And then when other people, when Jesus was looking at the motivation of this woman, the sincere communication of her appreciation 
someone else was looking at the cost implication and the wastage are we together but he never said you wasted this he tried to angle it in a way that should look like he was concerned about the treasury of the house are we together and this is what he said verse 5 please let's go back to verse 5 why was not this ointment sold so for him you can still worship jesus another way go and sell it bring the money let's add to the treasury but his motive was so that he will have more money to be stealing are we together it was never about jesus it was never about his desire to see his master exalted are we together now judas had no business listen although he was a sincere person he wanted to use jesus the moment he came and found out that there was a flourishing ministry he looked at it carefully and saw the financial potentials that were in that ministry and he strategically positioned himself being elected the treasurer he found out that he could keep motivating people and the more they brought money to the ministry he would help himself so you would see judas at every crusade you would see judas attending to the poor collecting all the seeds to jesus you would look from that experience and say what a zealous man the first to appear in every crusade ground the one to respond to the necessity of jesus but the motive behind it was his belly are we together the next verse verse 6 this he said not that he what cared for the poor the bible says but because he was a that was his mo the motive he was looking for more money so he could steal so he angled it in a way that made it look like he was having an appetite for god the bible says and he had the back and bear what was put therein. In other words, if they change Judas from being a treasurer to an ordinary disciple and made Thomas or Peter the new treasurer, all of a sudden he would not care about any sacrifice again. Are we together? This is an example of the motive and the motivation behind so many people. You would see them pray for the anointing as if they really love sick people you would see them pray for prosperity as though they really really want to help and bless people you would see them fast as they they pray for crowds and you would think they are really compassionate you would think they care so much about the people coming but at the heart of their pursuit is this self-centered demonic and many times satanic motivation are we together now how many men of god use the anointing use members use so many people to boost their ego and when they go around you see pastors gather to talk and you'll be amazed at the content of their discussion have you seen my members have you seen the jeep that this one bought for me there are 20 oil company workers in my church there are senators in my church there are this and that and that i mean we grew from 5000 to 20000 in one year great news but then what is the motivation behind it and so we use those things to scorn others we use those things to command honor when pastors come together the ones who seem to be having results or desirous of results seem to push others and sit in a position of honor that is not given by god motive motivation judas was doing what physically would have been a wise suggestion i can understand his passion because he was in the finance department are we together and so from financially speaking it would have been a still a worthy way of worship to sell it and bring the money and then the money be given to the poor but the problem was the motivation behind that statement not necessarily what he said the motivation behind it was wrong brothers and sisters you can fast all you can 
you can pray all you can you can carry bottles of anointing oil carry handkerchiefs and mantles go and fly on the man of god's bed and roll there from night till morning when this adjustment of the state of your heart is not in place forget about god doing business with you especially in this end time are we together proverbs chapter 16 verse 2 solomon who was a wise man said something that is very interesting proverbs chapter 16 verse 2 is projected he said all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes but the lord weighed the spirit can we have any other version just any other available one that renders something differently the lord tests the motives he judges the content the motivation it says all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes but the lord weighs the spirit the thoughts and the intents of the heart in other words if i get up right now and i tell this lady to stand up and i lay hands on her and she falls under the anointing while you are clapping and say man this guy is anointed god is not impressed with that experience until he scans the motive behind it if the motive behind it was to prove a point to a few people that the anointing is still alive that experience has been corrupted as far as god's standard is concerned are we together you can raise 10 people from wheelchair and in heaven you raise only one from the second to the last the motif cancelled it by zero are we together now look when you understand this you will focus more on motive than physical experiences because it's difficult for men to discern because men judge by the outward appearance how many pastors frustrate themselves how many people frustrate themselves they think they want power they think they want grace but god has already seen the true content of their hearts you will think when they are anointed they will spend their lives serving god you will think when they are anointed they spend their lives listen i go for meetings and thank god for the honor here and there different people have their ways of responding and while i step into the meetings to sit down i see all kinds of admiration you see a lot of young people bouncing on the floor happy and just wishing and say oh god give me what you have given this person and i can sense in my spirit the field of their motives they want to be celebrities and since they cannot run like Usain Bolt, since they cannot play tennis like the Williams, they feel ministry is a cheaper route to achieve the same thing. And God says, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Anna wanted a child. I've taught us. She wanted a child so desperately, but her motive was to prove to Penina that she also had a womb. And she kept going to Shiloh to pray and God never had it listen this is very scary a woman who wanted to prove she went to the house of god and cried and god said it's not enough reason for you to have a child until she gave up and said lord this is not about penina again i align my will to you she prayed once and a child came once 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 so many people one crowd they want power they want revelation 80 percent of the text messages that people send to me what is the secret of your anointing what is the secret of your grace what is this thing in these teachings that transform people let me tell you it's beyond prayer it's beyond fasting the motif of your heart is greater is the foundation upon which any true spiritual experience is accepted before God. this already is a deliverance for somebody hearing me because it's, it's a call for you to find out you have been engaging sincerely in many spiritual attempts but you may never find the power of god until your motif the state of your heart is arrived
the sincerity and the love that you have for God and his people. The sincerity and the love that you have. How sincere is your motive? As far as God is concerned and the sheep of his pasture. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life. He does not stand on the sheep so that they will see him. A good shepherd is not one who prays in tongues. A good shepherd is not just one who walks in miracles. A good shepherd lays down his life, constrains himself, inconveniences himself for the success, the progress. How many pastors do that? How many pastors rejoice that God is lifting people? How many pastors rejoice? You see, when you understand this, you will at once, listen, at once. I remember one time, I think I was, I, I, I don't know where exactly, and we were sitting down and one pastor, I was talking with a group of pastors and then somebody passed and then they tapped in and said, that's, that's apostle. The apostle Joshua Selman, you've been hearing about, that's him. And he came around and sat down in less than 10 minutes. This man was telling me, oh, he bought his suit, so, so, so amount. God has been faithful in the ministry. They've been seeing all kinds of explosion. And later I asked the other person, I said, sorry, what is the membership strength of this church we're talking about here? And it was not even up to 35. Are we together now? So you see that this person came and was talking like this in hope to get honor and respect because he has been taught that when you try to create that picture and you package yourself, and make it look like, look, I'm an overseer. I'm not just a pastor. I need you to know that I'm overseeing something. You need to realize that there are people under me. There are pastors around. You say, oh, really? We see what God is doing. Please, let me advise you. Get out of those wrong and devilish associations. I'm telling you this. You may be criticized, but it's better to be criticized than do business with God. You never find me in a company of all this rubbish by the grace of God no I never look down on any man whether you are pastoring one church or two churches and I never give you any unnecessary honor whether you are pastoring one million people are we together now there are certain people here if God will give you one tenth of the anointing you are crying for God will have to summon prayer warriors to pray for your salvation, not even the church again, just to make sure that your salvation is protected. Are we together? So many people. We have seen many people. Let's use the music industry for instance. We have seen people who when they started, they, they ran around pastors pray for me give me anointing give me this and that and the moment god lifts them a little they change in a way that you will not imagine are we together now and you find out that their motivation is no longer the passion for god it is where honorarium will come where the paycheck is fattest is where the holy spirit is directing them are we together so if they give you a ministration in one small youth fellowship or where there are 30 zealous youths genuinely hungry for God and they give you another invitation in Victoria Island where you are flying business class are we together now and a Range Rover Sports is what is receiving you from the airport to the hotel and you sit down and calculate you say I've suffered in this life even God knows I've suffered in this life then you take all kinds of selfies and snapshots of yourself and send it and write on that God is faithful. God is faithful, yes, but the motive behind that statement is corrupt. What you are really saying is watch my life and be intimidated. You are not saying, you are just using a Christian term. Are we together? Motive. I watch with pain in my heart. Because I know that God is still looking for men and women. There is no man of God that can bring the revival we are talking about single-handedly. 
the best of any man is an effective member god is looking for an army not a person if it looks like there is only one person it's because many people are not ready it's not because god is mising his grace i tell you this so many people praying and crying use me oh god let me change my territory use me as an agent of revival all kinds of people trying to play all kinds of gimmicks to see the power of god come but when he searches their hearts he sees that their motives are not right how many ladies want to marry men of god you would think it's because they are they care about the burden of the vineyard you would think they love the man and say oh god let me live my life ministering to this man the way they talk you'll be motivated you say you can imagine her passion have you eaten sir have you really eaten are you okay Huh? you have been losing weight these days are you okay but the truth of it is it's not any passion for any sheep is that the last time they checked their television and saw how mama looked mama of whichever ministry it was admirable people will come and kneel down before you and say mommy just speak a word and drop a check and they say if this is what mama represents i'm, I'm up for it i mean i i take it with all gladness and gratitude so it makes the sister to always establish her presence in the prayer meeting when there is bible study the sister is there are we together when there is any fasting program she's there she comes fasting but holds cooler for the pastor now there's nothing wrong with cooler ministry it's very useful uh come on very very useful are we together so that i don't make ladies punish a lot of pastors from do what god has asked you to do to the man of god Are we together? When food finished for Elijah, when Elijah's food finished and water dried, God sent him immediately to a woman to take care of him. So that ministry is very biblical. Are we together? Motivation. How many people in church are looking for ordination and PA? So, and they are the first to come and greet the pastor in the morning pastor how are you i want to tell you what is happening in this church it's like you have been very busy but i've been covering for you i can i can tell you exactly what has been happening the last time you went there is a stubborn lady in the worship team i don't know exactly it's not happening here i can tell you at least not not to this level praise the lord so i can give this example generally speaking and then once you talk you now say pastor uh, there's a message that I prepared anytime you are not free you are busy I can always stand in for you at the conference or the crusade you will look at this guy and believe that he's very zealous the pastor will say I really have someone covering my back but it's because this person went and met his uncle and the uncle said the job is not coming and he sat down and calculated and said which one is the fastest route to establishment masters phd i can start up a business it will take five years before it will be established but if i partner with this man i'm sure that in six months god will wipe my tears so he comes and you will find unusual passion are we together motive whenever you see a man who is very close to the anointing and never receives it his motive stopped him from receiving that's what happened to gehazi by the grace of god when you see the heads of departments of this ministry and many people and other people who are connected to this ministry when you look at the life of those who are connected in reality you even those who have never seen my face you will see a reproduction of grace i have met people in meetings i sat down and i thought i was hearing myself i was like my goodness who is this guy but there are others who are around the anointing around but their motive oh look let me tell you something about god he is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents hallelujah elisha walked with elijah 
for a very long time. He would have been, I mean, um, um, Gehazi. He would have been prophet Gehazi. But you can see his motive. One time Naaman came and when Naaman was healed, Elisha told him to just go and carry all his goodies and go. And Naaman, like Judas, you see it now. Naaman said, we can't let this thing just go like that. And he ran after him and said, wait, my master just changed his mind. Can you offload some of these things? I will handle it. And when he came back, he just kept quiet like nothing happened. And Elisha looked at him and said, was my spirit not with you? Sometimes members in church are really foolish. If a man is really anointed and he can stand on stage and see what is happening in the lives of people, what makes you believe he cannot discern your motive? Are we together? When I talk to pastors and I counsel them and they bring me problems, maybe them, assistants, um, other people around are fighting, I look at them and I say, come on now. Are you not anointed? Where did you keep the anointing? Do you drop it just at the altar? Can you not discern? Everyone say motive. Say it again, motive. Your motive and your motivation. Sincerity is what is lacking in the body of Christ. Sincerity. Sincerity of motif is the reason why we have not seen the power of God in our lives. Sincerity of motif. Our motifs are perverted. Our motifs are corrupted. I once met a pastor who told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one. When he told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one, I looked at his life and tears wanted to come out of my eyes. He thought it was a testimony. I said, I can't understand. What are you saying? He said, truly, he was in a program. He happened to be like a PA or some not PA but you know those who and see please if you are close to a man of God go back and start examining because proximity is not equal to connectivity you can be the closer you are to a man of God the farther away your chances of truly receiving the anointing because familiarity can step in are we together now Meeting. I never get too familiar with the Holy Spirit. I love him. The Holy Spirit has revealed himself in uncommon dimensions to me. But at every point, I make sure that that sense of honor, that my motif is always aright. When I'm praying for a meeting, oh Lord, I thank you for your power and your glory in this meeting. He sees my heart and he knows that I'm not trying to look for a name. I'm not trying to look for fame. Are we together? When was the last time? Listen, and I'm talking to all of us, especially for those who are pastors. When was the last time your motif was aright? You see why David was called a man after God's heart? David would say, search my heart. Not search my throne. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. Because my heart can be deceitful. So many people have missed out on the will of God. That's the reason why you find out that in many churches, after a while, people start fighting for the position that is most lucrative. When you call somebody and say, promise, go and work in welfare. Ken, work in prayer department. Maman, work in ushery. Maman says, ushery. It's me now that you are giving ushery. These guys in prayer department, at least the honorarium, there's a possibility of honorarium coming. Welfare, there's no possibility of any honorarium coming. Are we together? 
have you seen people lobby for positions in church you've seen that happen this is the reason they find you know how a funnel is when you pour water the funnel moves in a direction and so they discern where the money or the honor is flowing and they leech themselves around that place and God sees their hearts says your motif is corrupted I like you to in a very sincere way listen cry out and ask the Lord to search your motif for desiring his presence for desiring the anointing for desiring crowd for desiring revelation for desiring fame you want miracle power is up for grabs but the question is what is your motivation are we together very important come and make my heart your home Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. Come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know yeah search me through and through till my heart becomes when was the last time you listen to a man of God, his prayer content, and you had him praying and crying for the sheep. Oh God, bless these people. Oh God, increase them. If it means that you don't lift me and you lift them, go ahead, oh God. Sincere motive. Sincere desire. Oh God, I'm a shepherd. They can die, but let me live. That's the prayer of many people. That's the attitude of many people. I pray for you. May God touch your motif and bring you to a point where you are very sincere. Many people watch Johnson Suleiman and watch all the prophets who move in very uncommon levels of the revelatory dimensions of prophecy and you see the desire you see the desire you i mean you see the hunger every time they say a man of god is coming to town you see so many people they go and sit in front you would think they want the anointing for a clean motive sincerity that's what i shared with the pastors I told them many of you are not sincere it shows it shows in your discussions it shows in your your secret lives that you really do not love the sheep it shows that you don't care about them every time I come in for koinonia and I see crowds of people and I see people standing if I see just one person standing I can feel it in my heart Sometimes I'm almost quarreling the protocol department and they say, look, we are doing our best. There is only so much we can do. I, I feel as though I should stand and let the people, I, I just would not interrupt the work of the various departments. But I see it. Especially when we are done and I see people leaving and where we are going and I see some people trekking in groups happily through the night. My heart is moved. Listen compassion is a big key to walking in the anointing compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people it's the secret to the anointing are we together if sam is sick right now and i come to sam and i lay hands on sam and sam is not healed i lay hands on sam and sam is not healed 
I will carry some by myself to Shika because I am so interested in his healing my ego notwithstanding. But a pastor who is more concerned about his ego would rather leave some to die. Are we together? So that it will be through his hand. How many pastors have quarreled members for receiving miracles in other places aside from their church? Are, are we together? How many people will dare not give a testimony about what God used another man of God to do in their life before the overseer? He says, so you are trying to say I'm not anointed. Now, honor your man of God. Respect him. Don't come and cause trouble between pastors. But at the same time, any man who is desperate for change in people will celebrate that change even if it does not come through him because the most important thing is that the people have received many of the testimonies we give in our churches were not carried out by the hands of many of the pastors that's the truth about it but it's just that the people know if they testify and say the whole truth the pastor will note. In fact, it's not even the pastor. There is already a system to punish disloyalty. Are we together? Motif. Motif. And some of us in our little groups and fellowships is already happening to us right now. The moment somebody comes and says, Wow, God bless me with this revelation. And it did not come from you. All of a sudden, you start looking and say, Oh, I wish sure is correct. Let me see it. Motive. If what you want is celebration and being a celebrity, if that is your prime, if you just want celebrity, please go and act for him. If you want the anointing, if you want to serve God genuinely, your heart must first be to him and to the sheep of his pasture. I worship you, great I am. You are mighty in this place. I worship you, King of Kings. You are the strong and breasted one. I lift my hands in worship as I see praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I see praises to your name. Listen. You must love God and align your motive. I say it again. Align your motive for desiring the gifts of the Spirit. Align your motive for desiring power. You want access to revelation. Align your motive. Align your motive. Motive is the core behind the dispensing of graces unto people. What is the state of your heart? I know you are well-meaning, but what is the state of your heart? Sister, it's not like God cannot give you a great man of God to marry, but what is the motive behind your heart? If the motive of your heart is to serve God and to stand by that man to be a blessing to partner with him to lift up the banner of christ in the nations i guarantee you god will not withhold it from you but if your motivation is that you just sit down and just smile around and look like you are more than other ladies and so ankara and all of this you will never let me just tell you you don't even have to pray about it i'll help you answer the prayer now it will never happen that way because god is not a fool I want you to know that kingdom advancement is a serious business to God. He gave the blood of his very son for it. And so anyone playing games with the anointing closely related to this, I want to share with all of us a big secret before we go to point two. 
I began to pray recently and I was asking the Lord why many miracles that happen to people in the body of Christ don't last and the Lord showed me something that scared me I want to share with you this everybody say money shout it say mammon the Lord taught me a mystery that I want all of us please open your eyes and let me teach you something watch this if I'm holding money so I have your attention now come sir watch this if Michael is sick or in need of breakthrough or he's trusting God to wipe his tears in any area are we together now and then he comes to meet me as a man of God and I tell him Michael give me 1,000 naira and I will pray for you and I will sow a seed I guarantee you in the name of the Lord Jesus you just cancel that spiritual transaction anointing will never has never been an instrument in exchange for money are we together now I can bless him listen let me tell you why many people especially many young pastors and young prophets are fraud their their lives look like they are fake some of them are not fake the truth is that they are violating this law because you never buy the power of God no sir is God speaking to us I can bless him and he decides to sow a seed into my life he can use the money and buy a tape or buy a book a pastor can challenge people in the church to sow seeds for a project that's all right but where the money is in direct demand so that you will supply anointing is called witchcraft if you are doing it here stop it now let me tell you now stop it not later now stop it between you and god let it never happen you will never see the power of god that way remember in the book of acts the gentleman who wanted to buy power from peter and he said your money perish with you pastors have reduced themselves and reduced the potency of the anointing of the spirit i know we need money ministries need money don't get me wrong i know i know that pastors need money they have families but not to compromise with the anointing the anointing will bring you money big time people will surprise you but it's not going to be this way are we together all those things where you carry offering basket and as i heal you you drop your own whether you call it free will or whatever if it came in demand for the anointing brothers and sisters if you ever saw result it was the mercy of god not a justification of what happened this is one thing that i've seen that is eating people in the church you do not use the anointing for merchandise no you will be blessed you will be changed look let me tell you bless people and allow them to decide to honor you they will surprise you how much can i charge you for a breakthrough how much can i charge you for miracles let's assume that you receive a breakthrough and then you i ask you to pay me ten thousand twenty thousand let's even assume that i ask you to pay me fifty thousand and you bring it i have received wages not favor wages but by the time i bless you and i leave you to the god that sent me he himself will move you and you will come with one million naira ten times what i would have demanded and you will bless me it's impossible to be a true servant of god and bless people without god moving them to bless you it's no it never happens if nobody is blessing you it's because your anointing is not notable enough are we together this is one of the reasons why many people are rushing into ministry 
because it seems like it's working. Someone gets into ministry and in four months, he has 10 jeeps. He raised offering for himself and 10 people gave, and there are rich people. You see, people are desperate. So whatever, I said, I beg, please take the jeep and heal me. I'm tired of all this trouble. But God is watching. And you find out that they rise and never get to certain levels. And God says, I can't take you international with this attitude. You will misrepresent me. Your motif is corrupted. There have been times when people have sown seeds in this ministry. Especially seeds of kinds. And when they bring it, because I never use them. But I just bless them and we release it. Sometimes we give it to people. Sometimes we honor the workers with it. I look at it when I see maybe especially gadgets or some things and I find out that it's very expensive and we get to find out that the owner most probably is a student or whatever I'm even moved and I say ah this is a student probably the parents bought this for him we appreciate the sincerity but I have not once not twice I've asked the protocol department look for the owner of this and bring and I pray for the person bless the person and give the person the gift back for many of us, your hand is in a mode to collect consistently. It doesn't matter how it comes. No. That's not the way God blesses people in the kingdom. Is God helping us to examine motives? Motives. How many pastors have trouble rich men in their church? visitations every day you would think the visitation is because of brotherly love what sort of brotherly love you pass 12 members who are your members but because you know that you will take kunu or zobo or or maybe um whatever it is they just find something or cold water that is not honoring enough and then you go and keep inconveniencing some other people and tell them look uh i came with a word this word is very strategic let me see a seed I need a seed to, to provoke the anointing. The anointing is provoked, yes. But it's provoked out of revelation, not demand. Are we together now? It is true that you can bring a seed to a man of God. When Isaac was going to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. This was talking to, it was a fatherly blessing. It's not just that he was saying, come and buy my anointing with venison. He was saying, honor me with it. I've taught you the law of honor. But this thing of demanding money for power. Anytime, listen, it's not even every giving that is worth collecting. When you discern that that giving is like selling your birthright, you honorably decline. There are people who give you in such a way that the day you, as you collect it, you throw away your honor. Preserve the, how much is 10 naira, how much is 20 naira, tea and bread, and you lose everything because of it. Praise the Lord. Don't get into that attitude of wanting to buy anointing. I hate the way we talk about money all the time in church. It, it can, I mean, have you seen men of God who preach a very solid message? Solid message. And when the spirit of the people are lifted, it, it just now coins, they say in conclusion, there's a story and uh, immediately the people start getting uncomfortable because they know where he's going to. Say, I can't end this, this meeting without you hearing this story because this story would demand a, a response. There was a man and then so on and so forth and they tell you all the story and at the end of it, the man now says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of that and um, you... I'm going to bless you. Stand here with 5,000. Not if God is leading you or if you are led to sow 10,000. You, you are a rich man. You can't bring 5,000 for me. Stand here with 10,000. And the moment you start doing that, you may not be fake, but you are driving the, the, the fire of God from your life. And if you don't take time, it will become Ichabod, the departure of the glory. That's why certain men of God, eventually you find out that the grace of God just diminishes in their life. You would think they did not visit the Baba they used to visit. It's not Baba anything. It's just scriptural principles that they have violated. Say in the name of Jesus, 
I receive grace to be sincere and to be true. I open up my heart and I ask the Spirit of the Lord to examine my motive. How many people pray for hours because they are trying to intimidate others? They are tired though, but because they saw another colleague, they fire on. On a very good day, they would have rested if the person is not there. I've seen people who pray and they are sleeping. Once they hear the door, they just stop. To mean you should come and see me. In the... Look, 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 look. Don't play games with the anointing. You must be true if you want the power of God. Number two. You want to carry the glory of God upon your life. Your level of passion and hunger for God. Your level of passion and hunger. There's a song in my spirit. She's your mentor now. Come and sing it if you know. Spirit, lead me where my truth. Let me walk upon the waters You know the song? That's the song that is in my spirit. Sing it to him. In the presence of my Savior Spirit lead me where my Queen of borders, let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet will ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger. Sing it one more time with all your heart. Where my trust for you is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Take me deep, let my feet never wander. My faith will be made stronger. The presence of my Savior. Your Brothers and sisters, seeking God is a full-time pursuit. There's nothing like part-time seeking God. Are we together? No, you don't seek God part-time. You don't seek God with your spare time, sorry. You don't seek God with the remaining time you have. After you make money, after you marry, after you give birth to children, the balance of it, you now say, oh yeah, God, take. No, no, no. The jealousy of God fights anything that is above him. Even if it's what he gave you, he will still fight it. Listen, God can give you a thing that he will still fight it tomorrow. The moment it rises above him, his jealousy begins to fight it immediately. When the Bible says God is a jealous God, take that word very seriously. Your passion psalm 42 verse 2 listen pursuit is the proof of passion pursuit is the proof of passion every time you have passion towards anything you will seek it and pursue it unsupervised unsupervised do you know why the christianity of many believers is cold and lukewarm let me tell you the truth they do not have passion for God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This is the psalmist. A psalm communicating passion. Are we together? If this is my wife, 
if this is my wife watch this and i travel for two days if i'm not a foolish and a stupid man what should happen to me while i'm away if i really love her and i'm passionate i should miss her Abby. when i'm about coming what should happen when i see her will i just pass and say how are you i'm back you know there's something wrong immediately are we together when relationship and fellowship is in place i should run and give her a big hug and say sweetheart i missed you how are you just me what has happened passion if a call is coming i ignore the call because i'm trying to communicate passion if you must be prompted to love god and to seek god it's because you are not passionate enough anything you are passionate about you have time for it my brother that's why this night after koinonia as late as it is you are still going to escort the lady to her room the reason is because you have passion are we together there are brothers after koinonia right now they will even enter bus there is a fire they themselves cannot explain they say let's go what is boss is it will kill the time we have for our discussion and the lady stands brothers and sisters from here to north gate will look like five minutes and they say we're even here that's passion but let let me tell you to escort somebody you don't have any, a man let me ask you to escort your colleague by the time you get to that shop you say are you biking or we are walking because you love the person jesus brotherly love but there is no passion that fire is not there have you seen a lady 12 30 the guy is shaking and he says let me try flashing her he flashes once and she pity he say i'm sorry let me start by apologizing he say for what say I, you, you sound sleepy he say i was just stretching but the truth is she was sleeping everybody say passion say fire that's the name of that experience if you don't have that thing listen listen if as you are sitting down right now this is not your feeling for god you need a retreat i'm telling you the truth it's a sign don't wait until you see any demon or anybody chasing you in a dream you need a retreat very quickly fire that's what it takes there must be an obsession that's the word really if you are not yet obsessed about god forget about his power in your life it must be an obsession and by the way let me digress to help you test whether you are ready for marriage with the same feeling if you love the man and the woman in a lesser sphere careless easily replaceable attitude please seek counsel because you are about to get into trouble are we together it takes passion and fire to give excuses have you seen people who have passion for anything they give excuses watch how people act and treat football man you is about to play match 3 30 by 2 o'clock the person is there with singlet already arguing are we together arguing one hour before the time and then they sit down in the place of argument and they say if you did not start watching football from 1993 don't join us because you don't even know what it is. we need somebody with a historical perspective and they are arguing and the person is mentioned it's called passion the moment the match starts the person is in front sweating but remaining there thirsty but remaining there are we together a point comes there are guys there are ladies who will still remove his shirt and say i'm not going out this sweat we will die here with this sweat i must watch this match it's called passion now come to the house of god and see the coldness the coldness the coldness when an average believer tries to show that i'm a little serious with god we just say pastor are we together or mama it's a shame Bless you. it's a big shame that we even resent people for being passionate about god until your love for god make someone around you uncomfortable you don't love god enough yet that someone can look at you and say Kai, talk well carry your madness and leave my presence 
every champion is a fanatic of whatever he's excelling in are we together less as fair lukewarm attitude in everything is even why people fail generally in life there is nothing in life that is worth their unflinching pursuit i'm chasing after you no matter what you know the song i will keep bringing songs that i in my spirit i don't know the song so much but if you can help me any one of you if you don't know it i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do because i need you more and more more and more more and To what degree do you seek him? Let me tell you something. God has become my obsession. When I say an obsession, I don't know what he has done to me, but I pray he will do it to you. Amen. Believe me. Believe me. It's an obsession. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's an obsession. You must get to that point. Before you want a man's anointing, you must meet the standard of his level of hunger for God. No, anointing does not just flow carelessly. Don't you think because you are touching some? No! Bishop Oyedeko said the secret of um, the hand of God upon his life is his heart beat for God. More and more 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 psalm 69 verse 9 let me show you something very powerful there is a term i've seen in the bible but i've hardly studied it hardly studied it but i studied it recently and i was amazed Everyone read Psalm 69 verse 9. One to read. For the zeal of thine house had eaten me up. And the reproaches of them that reproach you have come upon me. Listen, let me explain to you what this means. The zeal of the house of God has so eaten me to an extent. I have become the same way they reproach God. They have transferred their resentment towards God to me because I have sought God so much I am the closest expression to him that they can see. So the anger they have for him, they have transferred it for me. That's how much I love him. Hallelujah. Are we together? It says the zeal. This was a prophecy about Jesus Christ. The zeal of thy house has consumed the zeal of thy house that a man can be so consumed with the things of God he has nothing to do with whether you are called into the ministry or not zeal the zeal of the Lord's house makes you pursue him ruggedly listen listen when was the last time you woke up in the night and you could not sleep again? Because you are thinking about the kingdom. You are thinking about his majesty. Something about him. Now you have me. And now I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. Now I surrender life is not mine you are everything everything is you you are everything everything is you you are the first the last beginning and the end In you I live 
and have my being There is absolutely nothing you can do Absolutely nothing compares to you I don't know the other part but you are everything everything is you you are everything everything is you sing it to him from your heart he is everything everything is you you are everything You are everything. Everything is you. Until you love God more than money, until you love Him more than wife, more than husband, more than academics, more than job, more than promotion, more than children, you are not entitled to the glory of God upon your life. The zeal in John chapter 2 from verse 17 when they saw the way Jesus was walking and the way he was doing the things in the ministry and flogging people out of the temple they remembered that the zeal of the Lord zeal is like an anointing it will drive you into places you never dreamt you will go zeal the same way you see a brother standing in the rain and rain is beating him and he says sorry why are you here Say, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for grace. Say, is it compulsory? It's late. He said, please, if you will not support my agenda, leave this place. Because the rain is not in. Say, what is rain? Am I sick? It's called zeal. If you do not have that for the house of God, you don't love him. If coming for koinonia does not drive you, do you know? Every Friday is like a wedding day for me. I literally as I sit down here, many of you would have noticed. I get blessed by the worship team, but I can't wait for them to finish their rendition for me to jump up and come. It's called zeal. I've been doing this for years. If I were pretending it, you would know it by now. There are times that I come directly from a meeting to Koinonia, but the passion and the fire is there. Food or no food. I pray for you that the zeal of the Lord will eat you up. That it will consume you that it will make you passionate so that when you get a job you will not leave him are we together so that when you marry you will not leave him so that when you no longer have prayer points do you know it is possible god will solve your problem there is no personal prayer point what then will you do when he solved everything the reason why many people are drawing after him i'm telling you this sincerely is because of the load of problems they have. If God solves all your problems, will you still seek Him? If there, if you're coming for miracle service, it's just to bring the prayer request of others. Will you still love Him? I can understand why you love Him because you need Him for your defense next week. You need Him for graduation. You are trusting you will manipulate the result in a way that you will live and be in peace. So I can understand your zeal. But what happens? Listen, you always know those who never had zeal for God by their commitment after God meets their needs. Not before he meets it. After. When a lady is looking for a husband desperately, I can understand why you are around for night vigil. But what if a husband comes and a rich one and then one month after your marriage you are pregnant every testimony you want has been given and to hell with god until another problem comes shade is here with her kids raising them she's been like this for many years in this ministry way before marriage raising her kids her son is very interesting he can mimic me almost verbatim this boy you are saying take it or this and that and in his own little way but he's growing 
some of us it took the grace of God to drag you back to the house of God the money you got before has finished so you came you you came in the name of thanksgiving but the truth is you are only thanking God because you are aware that in the next two weeks whether you thank him or not there's going to be a problem and so you have come to the house of God I love him whether he answers my prayer or not I love him whether he ever anoints me or not koinonia is too small a reason for me to love God the results in my life are too small a reason fall in love with him to that extent I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again falling in love with you falling in love with you falling in love with you again and again psalm 63 verse 1 and 3 fall in love with him and you will see his power in your life in remarkable ways fall in love with him genuinely beyond the need for things give me tea give me bread fall in love with him genuinely and i'm telling you you will see god answer your thoughts before they become prayer points psalm 63 Oh God, thou art my God, not our God, my God. Early, early, I'm so passionate about you. When I wake up, you are my obsession. And so I seek you early. My soul thirsts for thee. My body, my flesh longs after you. Do you know lust is a corruption of passion that should have been directed towards God? Lust. Lust. What you call lust. Immorality. Lust is misdirected and corrupted passion that would have been channeled appropriately to the rightful owner. But because the person is standing where God is, so you direct that passion towards the person. It says, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you early. I don't give you the remaining of my time. I don't give you the remaining of my time. When I do what I think is important in my life, then I carry the balance of the time and bribe God with it. And say, okay, Lord, please, so that I, you, don't, you save me from the guilt of feeling like I'm not seeking you. Most times when I go back after koinonia, after everyone is done and I've eaten, I go down my knees and sometimes I cannot even sleep again. I just sit down and I begin to meditate on his faithfulness. And sometimes I can just begin to play worship songs and his presence, his presence, his literal Shekinah will fill that room. Fill that room. There is a secret. There is a secret. Do you love him or do you want to use him? God does not want an affair. He wants a relationship. I've told you. God does not want an affair with you. You can have an affair with a prostitute. You can have an affair with your wife. You have a relationship with your wife. An ongoing, continual relationship. But you can meet a prostitute for one night and never see her. Not even know how her face looks like. 
God does not want an affair. Many of us are giving him an affair. I tell you the truth. Tonight, God is calling us to the place of power. Calling us to the place of power. Number three, the third key to carrying the glory of God. Can we just pray in one minute? I just feel that we should just, just pray in tongues just for one minute. Just to open up our spirits so that we don't trivialize this that we are praying. talk about the third point but the Holy Spirit is stopping me because these points that I've said enough God wants to do something in our midst this thing has pleased the Lord this thing I have taught I know when the Lord is pleased over something would you just pray and just pray in the spirit this is well pleasing to the Lord tonight it's an incense of worship it's a call for us to return back to that place. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs? Would you dance with me, oh, oh lover of my soul, yeah, to the song of all songs? Would you dance with me, oh, lover? To the sound of all songs, would you dance with me? Yeah. You're the lover of my soul. To the sound of all songs, just the voices. Would you dance with me, oh, lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? Oh, he can make your ministry powerful, I tell you. Would you dance with me, oh, lover? time. him and I pursue him 
I seek him as a job. I seek his presence as a full-time assignment. Let me tell you the secret of power beyond your fasting and your prayer. Have a genuine motive. No matter how wrong you are, let your motive be true. No matter what you don't know, let your motive be true. Your motive is greater than your actions. Your motives are stronger than your actions. And then seek him. Seek him. You will see more miracles in your life by the act of his love. Listen. 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 If these two kids are my children, by the time I'm done, you may not have the kind of access you want to see me. Is that true? Because you are coming to Apostle Joshua Selman. But if these are my children, they have no business with Apostle. All they know is Father. Are we together? They can watch you join a queue and just run. You see how our children come after Koinonia here. They don't come and join any line. They just pass you and rush to come and hug me. They are coming to hug their father. They have no business with whether whatever to them is not a puzzle to them is someone they love take away the unnecessary religion and the unnecessary formality come into that inner chamber of the spirit where only lovers come past the place where prayer warriors stop past the place where fasting giants stop past the place where word carriers stop and enter the inner chamber is a place where only lovers enter even prayer warriors don't enter that chamber even fasting giants don't enter the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard and it does not occur in the heart of any man what god has in store for them that love him them that are obsessed listen you will be sleeping in the night and his majesty will come and wake you and open you up to mysteries while someone else is fasting god takes his prayer point and gives you as a token of his love listen in 2000 and i think was it six now or so i had a vision and when i had a vision that was the first time that I saw a manifestation of the angel that walks with me. He's called the angel of the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. I have seen three of these beings. There is one, the name is Zion's help. That's the name of the angel. The helper of Zion. These are the angels that bring breakthrough. These are the angels that bring result. I, God is my witness. I cannot remember fasting and praying to say, open my eyes give me prophetic oh i'm just madly in love with him lord i don't know what you have done to me but i'm in love with you and god says i see your obsession and he says let me test that love what is it that you cannot give me and i say lord the stage is yours carry it whatever you think in my life is standing your place take it and god says truly i see the proof of love is that there is no there is no hiding anything are we together the apex of love between a husband and wife is intimacy being naked and unashamed are we together if you do not get to that point where you can be open to god and naked and unashamed there is deceit somewhere in your relationship if i'm going out with you and i password some messages in my phone and i'm afraid of you accessing it listen confusion is a sign that a deceiver is present are we together genuine passion we are going to pray god is going to visit us very briefly but we are going to pray to worship you i live to worship you i live i live to worship you To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh.
and way Give me you I don't care what it is it must wait Lord give me you Relationship can wait Jobs can wait Anointing can wait Give me you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the next five to ten minutes, there will be a very strange impartation in this place. This is why the Lord stopped me. And listen, aside from several activations that will happen, one of the major impartations that will happen in this place is the anointing to fall in love with God in strange ways. Listen, listen. Many of you, what will happen to you tonight, it will become as if you have become a madman. Something will come upon you. Something will come upon you in dramatic dimensions, proportions that you have never seen. It's a dimension of love. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you Falling in love with you Again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you Again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you falling in love with you one more time yeah I keep falling in love with you. more than ministry more than the desire for power more than the desire for fame and greatness Lift your hands. I tell you, something mighty will happen to you. The zeal of the Lord. 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 Ta 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 ta. The zeal of the Lord will consume you. It will eat you up like a cancer. As I begin to sing, it will be like an impartation from my left to my right and outside. It's like an initiation to a realm of love. And now, I am desperate for you. Go ahead, oh great one. And bring your seal upon people. And I, yeah. Yeah. And I, Lift your hands. Father, I pray, let a strange anointing fall upon your people. At the count of three, there will be mighty impartation, love for God. It will come heavy upon you. One, two, three, take it now. Take it now. Take it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Everywhere in this place, take it right now. Fire is a fire. 
and a seal for God is a fire and a seal for God a fire a passion for the house of God a passion for the things of God pray just a few minutes there's an impartation happening to you your love for God must be real it must be genuine it must be genuine it must be genuine ask him to give you a baptism of love for him love for his house Lord, let there be an awakening in the hearts of your people. Cry for the zeal of the Lord to come upon you. Lord, let your zeal consume me. Let your zeal consume me. Let your zeal consume me. your hands lift your hands I hear my spirit visions and dreams visions and dreams a mantle for visions and dreams prophetic encounters that will take you to the secret place Lord right now where are those people let that mantle fall upon them visions and dreams take it now take it now take it now take it now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus visions and dreams you will hear his voice in the night visions and dreams Shabbat 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm here in my spirit, spiritual accuracy. Spiritual accuracy. Especially for people in ministry. Please lift your hands. Something mighty will happen. God is about to end confusion in lives and mysteries. There is a mystery of spiritual accuracy. My God, I pray right now. Like a mantle, like an anointing that gives precision. As many people who are supposed to walk in this, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus, visit them right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 When your motif is right and true and when you seek him with your all like the deer pants after the water brook, unashamedly unembarrassingly then the stage is clear for you to cast true fire then the stage is clear for you to carry a mantle that no man can deny I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want those who came visiting to come out. I want to minister to them. Those who came visiting, specifically from maybe other places, pastors and all of that. I usually don't do this. I want you to stand with your heart hungry and desperate. Hungry and genuinely desperate to go back with an encounter. carry something heavy believe me you will carry a strange order of grace help them you will carry something mighty that you will take back to your regions strange levels of fire 
and anointing deep fountains of encounters this is a warning already to somebody who wants to carry the anointing and run back to your city and say um, I got it let me just advise you before we continue if Christ cannot find glory in a healing is witchcraft if Christ cannot find glory in a deliverance is witchcraft so it is never about Joshua Selman it is about an avenue to display the power of God before principalities and powers let me tell you we will make nonsense of the devil in this place today yeah he it, it, it said he made a public show that's what happens when healings happen when deliverances happen and you watch the age long chains upon people listen it's not just about falling down otherwise you think we're just doing the same thing every month think about the destiny of the one affected so when you see someone shouting under the anointing and you see the healings and the miracles don't just say why are they making noise think of the kingdom coming do you know what happens to that person when he gets up all of a sudden the lump has disappeared my goodness i can't find it where did it go to the kingdom has come that person goes back home and cannot sleep i used to think this thing is fake oh it has happened to me by myself the samaritan woman came the bible says she went and called people and said come and see a man who has told me what I have done? When the people came and encountered Jesus, they said, Madam, it's no longer because you invited us. We have had an encounter. My prayer for you, listen, my prayer tonight is not that you clap for others. My prayer tonight is that you will leave this meeting with something that will take sleep away from you. That you will sit down and say, my God, I have known God for a few years, but this one today, what came upon my life? The last few meetings that we've had around have been meetings characterized by humbling dimensions of the manifestation of the power of God and miracles upon miracles upon miracles. And I mean, I, have, I live in this reality with all humility. It's not something that happens to me once in a while. It happens every day, all the time. This has happened to me for decades. Yet there is a way god upgrades your life you know that you are not the same and everything around you responds to that upgrade that's what some of you are receiving tonight is that you are anointed what level is it listen if i give you 100 naira, he can buy pure water but he cannot buy wine but it's still money your possibilities in life are determined not just by the arrival but the extent to which you are anointed so it says how god anointed jesus not just that the anointing came look at the extent to which it came it came without measure such that there was no disease no infirmity that could not be healed there were times in my life and even in recent times certain sicknesses and diseases did not go when i prayed for people i went back to god I, I i am very humble before god i don't do all this arrogant i am a man of god thing lord what is, why are certain breakthroughs not coming into the life of people and god says there is a level in the spirit to which that is activated you have not gotten there yet that's why it's not there and i said lord what does it take to rise to that level because for as long as it is a price i can pay it the true proof that you love your sheep is that you will pay any price in the spirit to rise to that spiritual dimension where it becomes possible to release certain truths in their lives if i love you so much and I see that people get healed and people get delivered. But there are certain cases that seem to defy the power of God. My assignment, if I truly love you, is not to move around carrying protocol and placards. Apostle Joshua Selman is to go back and say, Lord, at what level will I be able to command the results that that brother needs, that sister needs, that spiritual growth? not just at what level will i be anointed so that one person can give me one billion that, that's that's not that's not it at all 
I remain committed to paying any price to rise to that level it is my personal desire that God will anoint me to an extent where any need that appears before me will go back with a testimony I believe there is such a dimension I have watched men of God risen to certain dimensions and stop there now the danger is because our world is so need driven whatever level you are in you will still be ministering to people but you will never know there can be a higher place that you can pray for one person and that miracle of one person will bring over a million souls to Jesus because everybody knows that person and they know the condition it's not something you can hide it's too peculiar to be denied thank God for the evangelism but I want to step into a new level of soul winning that is not just by talking to people one by one miracles commanding souls miracles commanding souls you enter a city and a popular madman that everybody knows when he's healed and sound and filled with the Holy Ghost that is evangelism for one year no devil can deny that result it's easy to ship a madman from somewhere and they can say you stage manage it are you hearing what I'm saying when your own father who you know is a drunkard and nothing in this world will change the person and you drag him to koinonia and in five minutes he's shivering under the anointing and that devil is getting out there is no other evangelism to that family than that one they will go back and they will say god is alive even the one who is stubborn and not born again will say i saw my father under the anointing confessing jesus i should get born again too we must enter a level where we bring major results for the kingdom not little results here and there that we keep priding ourselves in major testimonies for the kingdom not just for self-aggrandizement but so that one miracle can bring a million souls one miracle can transform a whole family I may not have the opportunity to come to everybody's family but imagine that you live today with a sickness by five o'clock when you were coming everybody saw you with that disease by nine or ten you are going back free when you go back home who can deny that God is alive when Pharaoh saw the miraculous hand of God Pharaoh broke down and said God is alive you know why they doubt the reality of God in the church? Because everything we are doing, unbelievers can do. So there is no reason why they should say it's spectacular. Have you not seen unbelievers who are orators? Compared to them, we are, we are playing child's play. There are people who have crammed the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, of heart. They are not Christians. They are just showing you how powerful their mind is. I mean, so what, what are you going to use to prove to those people that Jesus is alive? But when you do what no man can do, they know you must be assisted by an agency that is not human. Please, if you're a pastor here, let me encourage you. Whether you think you are calling to the miracle ministry or not, stop bragging and move, moving forward to do man of God. Go back to the secret place. And say Lord unction grace I have revelation but I need results when we don't have results we mock God and we mock ourselves that's why the pews of many ministries are empty because people are not idiots especially in this 2016 we may not be there yet but let your members see you striving let them see that shepherd heart genuinely that you are contending for something real Is God blessing us today? And so I welcome you to a feast of miracles tonight. Believe me. <laughs> you see, Ba, let me tell you something. When you have a key in the spirit, you know you have the key. If you do not have, admit you do not have and look for it. I know the things I do not have and I'm on a desperate unashamed pursuit to finding them but the things that you have 
you can hold it and no man can take it away from you Jesus said I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up so while you watch the miracles happen I know that there are several people in ministry please don't just come and entertain yourself let there be a cry in your spirit Lord there can be a new dimension in my life there can be a new dimension you are a businessman there can be a new dimension again I challenge you to be gifted is not enough you need an anointing need an anointing one supernatural manifestation of the Holy Ghost and his power upon your life will bring you that prayer request you have been praying for including finances one genuine miracle one person's life whom you transform someone can look at you and say i don't care what you read i shook hands with you yesterday and my life changed come and walk in my company see never allow what happens in the society make us become carnal you know people are gradually reducing god to a scientific he must be explained by a plus b the god we serve is spiritual and the Bible says, they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. The God that we serve is a supernatural God. Are we together? So everything is supernatural. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may bring glory to you. A miracle is what happens when the power of God comes face to face with a situation it's a contention of superiority and the power of God represents his might in a situation and he will always prevail when a miracle happens let me tell you God is greatly glorified critics may say what they want to say but a miracle done from a heart of love and a genuine desire to please God brings glory to God in no small way you are the miracle walker you are the miracle walker will you come and do a miracle a miracle today you will do a miracle a miracle today you are the destiny changer you are the destiny changer Will you come and change my destiny, my destiny today? You will change my destiny, my destiny today. The Lord spoke to me a few weeks ago and said, Son, if you continue with me, a time will come you will bring miracles for nations. Nations. You will bring miracles for nations, not just for individuals. And the Lord told me that I am shifting you from cities to territories, territories, territorial unctions where you bring miracles for territories. When you step into a territory, it doesn't matter the church that hosts you. It doesn't matter what meeting brings you. If you remain faithful and you remain hungry, I will give you that unction for territory. Why do I say this? To encourage you that every one of us who presses genuinely, I am surprised when I see how complacent many people are. And I tell them, compared to what are you making this noise? Do you know how many people don't get healed in our meetings? If we knew it, we'd be ashamed of ourselves as men of God. If there are hundred sick people here, and 10 people get healed it's a shame to the anointing it's not something to brag about and say somebody was healed no. I will go back to God crying in sackcloth and ashes and say Lord grant me grace see let me tell you these are the kind of people who will be trusted with the power of God hallelujah there is enough unction and grace in this house and available upon this altar to reveal 
Jesus to your situation. It's up to your heart to, op to be open. Don't sit down arguing around and wondering will he touch me. Do you think God would have gathered these people just to play games? Even if you were God, if you saw a crowd gathered like this, hungry, waiting for you, would you leave them that way? Hallelujah. Please pray in one minute before we continue and say, Lord, my heart is open. Don't bow your head. Pray, pray seriously. Pray seriously. Lord, it is within your power to wipe my tears. Help them, please. Help those under the anointing there. It is within your power to help me. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. And with your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible than the standing here only because you made you made a way when our backs were on the wall and it looked as if it was all And we're standing here only because you made you move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles, you perform miracles, and there is nothing that's impossible. And we stand. What is that mountain that has stood before you people of God please hear me if God cannot crumble that mountain then I think he does not deserve to be God but you see the thing is he will not crumble the mountain by default you've got to press with your heart opened genuinely and say Lord please step into my life and do a miracle do a miracle he only responds to the heart that cries. He only responds to the heart that pants after him. You've written several requests and you've prayed. But I want you to cry to the God of heaven and say, Father, give me a visitation. Lift your voice and pray.
two prayer points lord give me a miracle and get glory out of it lift your voice and pray give me a miracle and let the miracle be an opportunity for you to get glory out of my life let my healing tonight be an opportunity for your name to be lifted let my deliverance tonight be an opportunity for you to be lifted Waymaker, open a door for me for the sake of your glory and the struggles in my life here is an opportunity for you to be glorified are you praying inside outside hallelujah hallelujah listen listen you can vow your way into a miracle by saying lord i vow that if you give me a miracle i will not be silent with it let me tell you these are the kinds of prayers that god wants not a testimony that you brag around and make noise for yourself you can vow your way into breakthrough and say lord change my story and i must stand before your people to testify lift your voice and pray yes lord yes lord wipe my tears and take the glory Let them that have mocked your grace upon my life be put to shame through this testimony. Awesome God, how great Thou art! You alone, mighty are Your miracles. Stand in awe of Your holy name, Lord. You alone, you alone. Mighty are your miracles. Mighty are your miracles. Send it all of your hope. Before we begin to minister, please bring out your prayer request and hold it. We are going to pray for five minutes. If you have not written one, you can write one. Bring out your prayer request. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. We are going to pray. 
let me tell you something we have seen dramatic breakthroughs it's a revelation that God gave we're not just writing requests for nothing people's destinies have changed God has wiped the tears of families and individuals hallelujah I'd like you to hold your prayer request and in one minute cry and say Lord everything everything written must be turned to a testimony not some Lord I thank you thank you thank you Kaparatokata. thank you it's not too late to write those following online make sure you have your request he said, make your request known. Make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, everything. 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 One by one. One by one. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, one by one, by the unction, the anointing that is in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please keep it down and lift your voice and everything you do not want to see in your life, begin to release it to leave you right now before we pray everything 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 you are tired of seeing in your life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Expect to be healed. Expect to be delivered. Let me tell you something. Deliverance is very powerful when it is done scripturally and is done biblically because it's a separation between men and the forces that cause their problems. There are forces that are responsible for the problems, the challenges in people's lives. There are, there are forces. There are forces. And in a few minutes from now, we are going to begin to pray. I tell you, fire will burn in this place. Fire will burn in this place. And no devil will be able to stand. There are people whose lives must change. That's why we came. That's why we came. That's why we came. That's why we came. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Every spirit responsible for my pain, you are under arrest tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Every spirit. Every spirit responsible for my failures responsible for the limitation in my life hallelujah Please lift your hands, everybody. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. Please, everybody, if you can. If you, if you are doing something that doesn't allow you, that's all right. 
but please lift your hand don't allow the devil cheat you in this time please don't allow the devil cheat you when you hear me ministry minister like this is because i'm under the anointing of the spirit these are not things i'm doing of my own accord it is the foolishness of spiritual things that produce result keep your hands lifted keep your hands lifted the first set of people that god will step into right now are people that god is breaking i'm seeing i'm seeing god break delay i'm seeing chains on people's legs and the lord said just lift your hands and he will locate them by himself so keep your hands up father i have done what you have told me to do right now inside and outside right now right now inside and outside i stretch my hands bring them out right now everyone whose feet has been chained kaparataka supaya i unloose those chains now i untie those chains now i untie those chains right now bring them out the second overflow god is touching a lady so dramatically delay 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 you can't stand the anointing tonight you can't stand the anointing tonight oh there is grace in this house to challenge every altar of delay that has tied down the lives and the destinies of people you must go forward you must go forward you must go forward you must go forward it's time to move forward it's time to move forward keep your hands lifted I'm seeing altars on fire and the Lord said it belongs to families Lord where are the families right now right now let the fire of God locate them right now where are these families I stand by this anointing and I command everywhere across this building every family under the siege of witchcraft every family under the siege of witchcraft fire comes upon that altar fire comes upon that altar God is saving people right now the power of the Holy Ghost is at work in this place you can't be the same you can't be the same hallelujah keep your hands down God is doing a quick work only ladies lift your hands only ladies lift your hands please lift your hands ladies represent gates in the spirit and there are destinies whose gates have been closed right now I'm about to speak in the name of Jesus upon every lady here upon every lady here who the gate has been closed i command right now be open be open be open many of you will be surprised what will happen to you right now sisters you represent gates 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 young and old young and old may those gates be open now may those gates be open now May those gates be open now. May those gates be open now. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. 
you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every strong bone shall be broken you wear the victor's crown Lift your hands. The Lord is showing me something very. I prayed about this in one miracle service. There are people here whose destinies have been exchanged for others. I pray right now, wherever they are, at least 40 people, 40 people, wherever they are right now, I command a reversal. I command the reversal. Fire, fire, fire falls upon people. Fire, every destiny that has been exchanged in the realm of the spirit. Every destiny that has been exchanged in the name of Jesus. Every load you are carrying that is not yours in the name of Jesus, it returns back to the sender. Everything must come down. Every strong bone shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every strong bone shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah. I tell you miracles are happening here mighty mighty miracles mighty miracles mighty miracles all those out here all the spirits tying down your destinies at the count of three this is miracle service they live now. I speak in the realm of the spirit. One, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out of them. Go forever. Release their destinies. Chains be broken. Release their destinies. Come down, and strong bones shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You wear the crown. You wear Hallelujah. The crown. Let me tell you something. No spirit will hide today. The power of God is strong in this place to bring strange visitations. Lift your hands, everyone. There are men. It's not just that you are delayed. You are not even moving at all. I want to pray. And the prayer I'm praying now is an unction that will begin to move people forward. An unction that will begin to move people forward. But first, the strong man that has kept families down must be dislodged. Lift your hands. I pray right now. Whoever is under the influence of any spirit and any power that is causing any retrogression, and non-progress right now as i pray fire comes upon them in the name of jesus inside and outside take the fire now take the fire now take the fire now Hallelujah. 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 I'm seeing someone they brought here. I don't know if the person has a mental problem or is mad. Is there someone like that? 
there's someone they brought like a mental problem mad a mad person where is the person bring the person it's time for a miracle this is a mad person every high thing must come down every strong wall shall be broken you were the victor's crown I'm seeing a man that they brought here. It's like he has a problem walking very well. Is there someone like that? It's like he has a problem walking very well. A man, I don't know if there's pains or is that he cannot walk completely. Is there such a person, please? We have to hurry up. I want us to finish in good time. Is there such a person? Hold on. Let me just, is there such a person? outside he can't walk he can't walk he's paralyzed huh what who brought him come come quickly please what's the situation What's the situation? Listen, sir. Please, as loud as you can. Joseph recent, last week I visited him then at Kano with his wife. And they informed us in the village that he's paralyzed. This man is a policeman. You say policeman? No, we forget I'm seeing... his cardigan for, from Kano. So we call okay. him the custom officer. I'm seeing him where... Okay. The custom officer. What's That's wrong with him now? Presently now can he cannot... hear me? We can hear you, sir. But he can okay. talk and he has... Look at me. Can you hear me? No, no, hold on. Can you hear me? Where are you from? Yeah, from Kano, sir. Kano, you yeah. came from Kano? Yes, yeah, sir. Look at me, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, look at me. Since when could he not walk? Wife, come, please. This is your husband for how long? This is almost a month now. But the leg is just two weeks now. The leg is two weeks? Yes. It's okay. I'm seeing stroke in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, look at me. Look at me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? The first miracle is for him to hear what I'm saying. Something has affected his mind. He cannot even hear. Huh? He can't even talk. He can't hear. He can't talk. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that deaf and dumb spirit to leave you. To leave you. Sir, look at me. Look at me. Can you hear how, sir? Huh? Look at me. Can you look at me? Try to move your legs. Can you? Can you try to move your legs? Can you try to do what I'm doing? Try to move your legs. Talk to him that I want to pray for him. Who is this? That's so Why are they here? Hold on, please. Uh, 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 uh. Let please only the case I call. Don't just we are going to pray for people. What's wrong? What's wrong? This lady is mad. Yes. Since he, when? Yes. Yeah. Who knows you, madam? He, he, are, are you in Zaria here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Her case is mental. Now I started the the decision for hospital. Now the they, they do. It's like epilepsy. It is like epilepsy, so it affected her brain. You can imagine. Hold my hands. Father, I command that spirit to leave. Mad spirit, go now. You will let this girl go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out of her now. Out! Thank you, Jesus. Just lie her down. She's going to get up. Sir, I'm, I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing witchcraft because I'm looking at a man who is already dead, not even that he's dying. 
somebody that they've already killed he's already dead get a chair and keep him let him sit down and you pray what you guys will do is just try to talk to him i need him to hear what i'm saying because i want him to lift his leg can he see me madam you are his wife you will you will help us eh? and be talking to him give him a seat please so that we don't waste time daddy you're welcome sir from where sir what's the issue who brought him out i, I came with my neighbors what's the issue sir Okay. Is the mic working? Is the mic working, Lawrence? His mic. Sir, can you hear me? I can hear Please you. come. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a problem. Um, have you gone to the hospital, sir? You've gone to the hospital. Yeah, to the who hospital. has glaucoma? It's me. You. You are yes. the one who has glaucoma. Yes, because I'm seeing a writing on your head and it's written glaucoma. Yes, that you have glaucoma. Yes, this problem started like eye problem. Yes, then it moved to your hands. Yes, and now it's on your leg. Yes, and it's like stroke. Yes, you will be healed right now. Amen. The Lord himself Amen. is going to perfect Amen. you. Amen. Daddy, hold this mic. Shout, say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. Now. Now. Stroke. So, live my life. Live my life. Blindness. Blindness. Live my life. Live my life. Now. now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Please come name. up and jump. Come. Come up. Come up. Come up. Go ahead. Do what you put in. Do what you put in. Do what you put in. Come. Walk. also has an eye condition. Please look, sir. Can you see people? I can see people. Could you see them before? Yeah, but I can't recognize them. You can't recognize them. But now, can you recognize them? I can see them, but not fully recognition. Sir? Not fully recognition. No full recognition. The Lord has started something in his life. He could not, I mean, glaucoma and then down to stroke. You can see him still limping. Daddy, in the name of Jesus, you came with somebody. Where's the person? Who came with him? You are wearing a white scarf on your head. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Come. You are the one. Is this your father? No, sir. My neighbor. Your what? My neighbor. Oh, that is she's your neighbor. We are going to pray. And then God will bless you a thousand times. I'm going to pray for you. Daddy. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The power of the enemy. The power of the enemy. Over my life. Over my life. Will not die. Will not die. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. Please exercise yourself and go in your liberty. The Lord perfects your body in the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, I'm going to pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help her, please. In the name of Jesus. How can a, a lady like this planning her life like any other person? Now this girl is mad. You look at this. This is real madness. It's not like it's a child's play. Eh? She came back from the office on Monday. Then she started reacting. She came back from the office mad. You see, let me tell you. Look at this. It's one thing to leave your house quietly. The Bible says there are arrows. She came back from the office where? On Monday. And then I heard just, can you imagine? You got up and went to work and came back mad. This is the world we live in. Are we together now? Let me tell you, wickedness is very, 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 very real. Very real very real mama that woman in on yellow please come i don't know you but the lord is saying that your joy needs to be restored one two why am i seeing you there's a line between you and that lady with red this one holding your hands what is the relationship between two of you come my friend she's your friend you came together yes. i'm seeing a light left you and to her and then the lord is saying i should pray for you because it's the same thing two of you are going through we have to pray for you number one your joy your joy needs to be restored and then number two your health you are feeling pain in your stomach i have to pray for you so that they will tell you five words mm -hmm. madam let me talk to you now did you tell me miscarriage no. because i'm seeing something growing huh 
and is paining you and this thing will make you to be bleeding unusually is fibroid you are bleeding unusually and this thing is not just miscarriage because for the miscarriage a man appears to you in the night and once you see that man the next thing is you have miscarriage but we are going to pray madam can i pray for you where are you from ben benway ben, boy, stay in Zara. you stay in daraka let me pray for you madam the lord needs to restore your joy because there are things i cannot say here but one of your major requests is the fruit of the womb is that true the fruit of the womb and i see you even praying that if possible let god give you twins yes sir is that true yes sir. and you are asking that the lord will give you twins yes, sir. and i'm going to pray for you because those twins will pray that god will give Amen. It to you. you believe it i'm not a herbalist lay your hands on your stomach we have to pray there's a man that appears to you this is demonic in the name of jesus and by the blood of the eternal covenant i set you free from all this nonsense around your life in the name of jesus ma i pray for you you desire children god will not just give you children may he give you twins in the name of jesus and that formation of fibroid in your body we cause it right now you are feeling like fire is moving around your stomach in the name of jesus christ a supernatural miracle for you in the name of jesus let me pray for you ah you're not married are you married um, because i i wanted to pray the same thing and the holy ghost is telling me you are not married but you are about to marry there's somebody in your life he has engaged you eh? is that true yes sir who is the person he has engaged is that true you are engaged to marry so i have to pray for you Kai, my sister don't be offended though there's serious witchcraft in your family i'm seeing this witchcraft coming from where is otoko in eh? benway state what do you have to do with otoko there is one of my own people but me i'm from otoko <laughs> Just answer what I'm telling you. What do you have to do with Otuko? Who is there? He's my uncle. Father, in the name of Jesus, your marriage will be successful. Look at me. I don't know how you do this, but don't allow them to do anything on you that is demonic in the name of marriage. I'm seeing something that has to do with you and a tree. Just, I don't know what I'm saying, but be careful. In the name of excitement of traditional marriage, they initiate people into nonsense and rubbish. I pray that the Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Um, God wants to do a very spectacular miracle in this place right now. There is someone here you completely cannot see with your right eye completely cannot see with your right eye but a miracle is going to happen right now completely cannot see with your right eye wherever that person is in the name of jesus i command that you begin to see with that eye now i command that you begin to see with that eye now i command that you begin to see with that eye now please check yourself very quickly check yourself very quickly while we're doing that there are there are a number of people and when i pray for you if you get healed and, you, and you, you find out that you're in that category just come out quickly let's save time i want to pray for people right now i'm seeing people who have been having severe pain around the chest region like your heart yes some of you when you wake up in the morning severe pain severe pain the lord is healing those people right now right now please check yourself and if you see a miracle run out here there is a miracle happening to somebody right now check yourself severe pain are along the heart region miracles are happening right now right now as i speak only those who are healed of this miracle make your way to the front i see a miracle happening to somebody right now make your way to the front celebrate them they are coming celebrate them they are coming jesus is touching people your chest i see a miracle around the heart region very quickly please Save our time. Jesus is killing people right now. Koinonia, is this how you celebrate miracles? Celebrate miracles. 
celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles celebrate miracles the chest area there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain hallelujah check it right now is there any pain is there any pain no, sir. Like, look at the boy is even crying how long quickly just testify one minute quickly turn face the crowd quickly like, it's okay you don't have to cry up to more than four years the pain comes as if when i'm breathing when you are breathing you feel the pain and right now face. check it do what you couldn't do completely no pain in the name of Jesus, that miracle never returns to you again. Mama, any pain? Let's take a few testimonies. No pain. Completely. For How long has it been? It has been there for years. For more than five, three years. More than five years. Yes, Please yes. check it now. We want you to confirm. Look at this. Look at this completely. The pain is gone. The anointing is even on her. Help her, please. Help her. How long, my dear? Please, those who have been healed, just come here quickly. We'll give you some. Just turn, face the crowd very quickly. Organize yourselves, please. Ushers, help them. How long has it been? What's your name and how long? About two years ago. How is the pain like? What is describe it for us very quickly? As Don't worry. She's, she's after, just here. Be patient. After I eat, after I eat food, uh -huh. then I'll be strong. Then you'll chest. be struggling your chest. Is, it, is there pain now? Mm -hmm. Is there pain? Check it. Make sure you are telling the truth. If you lie, we'll clap for you, but you are the one who will suffer. Praise God. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. All of you, all of you healed of that pain. Lift your hands. Let me pray for all of you right now. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural miracle. It never returns. 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 Give Jesus praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus praise in the mighty name of Jesus. My goodness. I just saw a spectacular miracle in the realm of the spirit. There is someone here who has just been healed of pile. Please check it. I want you to come and testify. You will be very surprised. Pile has just been healed right now. Right now, supernaturally. Pile has been healed. Please, if you can check yourself, I would like you to check yourself. Let someone check you so that it is not a lie. Pile with intense pain. And God is healing that person right now check yourself and when you check yourself please let me have the person come forward and then we'll come and testify and god will give you a dramatic 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 miracle pile make sure you check and let the person come out in the name of jesus there is a lady at overflow too not the first one the other overflow um your name is blessing your name is blessing Please, if there is such a lady like that, can you quickly run before we start ministering to cast out every devil and pray for the sick. God is touching people. Please, the person with pile, go and check yourself. A lady with the name Blessing. You are wearing white, white jack like sweater. Is there somebody like that? Blessing. Outside, overflow too. Where is she coming from? Please, always confirm. Where are you coming from? The other overflow. What's your name? Blessing. Where, is, where are you from? Hold my hands. God is going to give you a miracle and he's also delivering your family. Your family needs deliverance. Huh? Your family needs deliverance. Hold my hands. For God to have located you is because he loves you. Be set free right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm hearing the name of someone and you are my namesake. Your name is Joshua. You are outside. Please come in. You are outside. Come in. God is bringing deliverance to this lady and her family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A supernatural miracle. God is bringing deliverance for her family. They will never be the same. There are four of you that are supposed to be here with this name. Four of you. Please stand here, all of you. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to pray for you. Come, God is going to use you. Huh? God is going to use you mightily. I'm going to pray for you. My friend, you, you love God, but God needs to help you. Huh? Do you hear how, sir? Kajiko, you have bad friends. We are going to pray for you. Huh? In the name of Jesus, sir, look at me. God is going to help you. Who is a trader in your family? Mother. Eh? My mother. What does she trade? My moi. God wants to change her story. Amen. Hold my hands. You are going to start having strange revelations. And an anointing is going to come upon your life. Right? As I'm speaking to you now. An angel of the Lord. You will feel something like a crown being put on your head. It's a mantle. It doesn't mean you should just go and start ministry. But it's to tell you that God will use you very mightily. Father, confirm your word in his life. You will never be the same. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell your mother that a prophecy has come for the family. That God is about to lift the family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you look like an ordinary person but you are going to hold a lot of money in your hand there is an unction there is grace for finances upon you there is grace for finances upon you where's Ejimi please he's going to go let him lay his hands on you there's grace for finances that will come upon you and you will never be the same I have to pray for you you love God but you are in here you are out here you have bad friends come follow me your friends are not good people where are you where are you you are in Samaru here yes sir Huh? Yes, sir. You love God? Yes, sir. Is it too much of a price to leave your bad friends? It's too much. Ah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray because God wants to use you as a savior to your family. Are we together? But you see hold on please let me talk to you if you really want to be great in life it doesn't matter whether you grew up with the same people you must have the courage to tell some people i love you i'm not i don't have a problem with you but since you are not just going my direction let me tell you you can't play games with god and 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 you god is not a herbalist that you pray abracatabra with if you are serious with god then go for him are we together i love you and in the name of jesus christ i pray that every spirit of rebellion will live your life in the name of jesus there is hmm, this is this is i don't know why god is giving me this kind of instructions here please don't feel embarrassed there are two boys and one lady two gentlemen and one lady here you need to be prayed for you have an uncontrollable appetite for stealing please don't be embarrassed ordinarily i will not ask you to go out there are two of them it's not like you're a bad person anything you see you must carry one lady and two guys please come out we're just going to give one minute there are so many things we need to do this is a revelation god is giving me please this is a family of faith we're not saying you're a thief but this has brought so much trouble to you please whether you are inside or outside don't be embarrassed there is a lady in this list and there are two gentlemen wherever you are please as you hear the word of the lord make your way to the front you need to be delivered you have tried to stop using willpower it's an addiction you don't use willpower to end supernatural things make your way to the front and i'll be glad to pray with you make your way there's somebody like that i'm I want to pray for this guy but God is saying I should wait for that case there's somebody like that let's celebrate him you are the one there's one more gentleman and a lady one more gentleman and a lady please there's nothing to be ashamed of this is a family of faith please very quickly just one minute there's there's so many other things we have to do Sata stealing no matter what happens you can't stop it where's the other brother please don't delay us it doesn't take time to know you have this problem because it's a challenge that you've been trying to solve let me tell you something you see ba these things are spirits 
it's not whether you are a thief or not if it comes upon you it will make you act that way you may not even use what you are carrying but you will still carry it anyway please where is the last person don't delay us let's pray come let me pray for you before i pray for them the last person quickly summon the courage to come and join them very quickly so that i can minister to you the lord will anoint you the lord is saying i should tell you he's restoring your family huh where are you from i don't know why god is visiting benway state today where are you from from benway state god is visiting benway people in very strange ways it's like the miracle service is for benway people benway people there's a lady self from benway who is going to be under the anointing now as a testament of this thing i'm saying hi this god i don't know i don't know this this my god make sure she's from benway where is she from no 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 don't don't worry don't feel embarrassed my dear i love you and i'm very proud of you right look at me can you go come you love god but there's one boy around you send him a text this night that joshua selman said he should never come around you again hmm? don't feel bad this this i'm not i don't hate people but number one this boy is a is a small boy he doesn't even know what he's doing to um please there are things i cannot say here huh are you ready for a child now huh yes. she's saying yes uh, no. okay well who knows i mean mary was 14 years when she had jesus so please but on a, on a serious note huh you love god you are a serious lady but there's something on you that makes bad boys bad boys the moment they see you you look at them you look at their eye you know that they are not serious christians and they keep coming to you but there's one that's been disturbing you send him a text and say joshua selman said please please he, he should come for bring him for koinonia next week let god help you yes instead of driving him let god help you are we together so i'm going to pray for you listen there are many more people who are bigger thieves that have refused to come out are we together so don't ever be embarrassed you see when you ever point one finger at people make sure that others be sure that others are pointing at you i want to pray for you so that you'll be free in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen where's our benway lady careful please bring her I want to use her to speak a prophetic word. There was a time it was Kogi, right? Remember. So today God has decided, hold my hands. No, 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 the other hand. I want to pray. Watch what happens now. It's called signs and wonders. These ones are not miracles. They are signs and wonders. They are faith boosters. The Lord is with this lady visiting Benway people right now. Visiting Benway people right now. Right now. God is visiting Benway people. Those altars now. Now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Every territory of Benway that has tied the lives of people down. I hold this lady as a point of contact. Inside and outside. The anointing of God will fish them out by power. I command those altars. Those altars. You come under siege tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. Listen. You will watch all these people come to testify. They may not even know what is happening to them. You are not just falling for nothing. And you don't even have to fall. For it to show that something is happening in your life but there are visitations that god is giving people 
grace in your life and your family in the name of Jesus I pray for you I command that spirit to leave you forever no appetite for stealing not only is God delivering you from stealing lust leaves you now in the name of Jesus every lust leaves you now in the name of Jesus my brother I command a miracle for you right now give me your hands in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there's somebody here you stole fuel you stole fuel and this thing brought a problem but you kept quiet it's a spirit God wants to set you free please don't feel embarrassed fuel like um, fuel PMS I don't know if it's you know fuel for something I don't know what it's for but you you found yourself stealing that fuel to do something with it I don't know what it's for please I want to pray for you because the person you took that thing from pronounced a curse are we together please that's why I want to pray for you we have to pray right now and then I'll, I'll minister to the sick please if there is such a person I want you to come out or maybe someone you know there's nothing to be embarrassed about you're seeing us praying for people you stole fuel it may not be that you are a bad person you see fundamentally people are not bad situations pressures and spirits make people act in certain ways that may look disdainful and embarrassing you must be spiritual to be able to love people in spite of their flaws are we together there's somebody like that oh there's somebody like that the holy ghost is still speaking to me there's somebody like that please have the courage to come forward as we begin to pray don't meet me after the service please there is grace and unction to pray for you right now this has to do with fuel that you carried i don't know whether you sold it or you gave it to someone or something like that but then we have to pray for you 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 everyone lift your voice no god is saying i should stop till the person comes out who is the person please my brother look at me i'm not i'm not i'm not um, embarrassing you right is the flesh that caused this embarrassment but you see when god shines light on you it's not unto condemnation are we together he said he who does not have sin should cast the first stone so we are not people who come and embarrass people and condemn them the person you took the foil put a curse upon you and the curse is that nothing you enter will stay in your hand and that's what i want to take away from your life that's why i brought you out are we together now in the name of jesus christ it took a man to pronounce this curse be free now by the power of the holy ghost i command that it leaves you forever 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 i take away that pronouncement from your life in the name of jesus you love the lord with all your heart and you walk in his ways god bless you please stand up and go hallelujah i'm about to minister to the sick right now very quickly and while i do, you can you can just bring the lady to the front i'm still praying for her hallelujah sister talk to her sister my dear look at me look at me how are you how are you are you fine what's wrong with you you don't know that's how she's behaving oh that's how she behaves she hears you she actually hears you when you speak but she won't be able to respond do you know why she's not wicked she's under bondage and we're going to pray for her right there's a reason why i ask you to keep her here i keep laying my hands on her from work she came back i'm praying i don't know who did this thing but in the name of jesus as he's leaving you it will land on that person's head <laughs> some of you don't like the prayer i'm praying i say it again whoever brought this it must land on the head of the person it's because they didn't do it to your sister or to your brother that's why you leave your office and return mad what if she's the breadwinner of her family that whole family has come under siege let me pray before we let me prophesy to you before we pray in the name of jesus 
any human agent who has partnered with the realm of the spirit to bring the pain in your life i pray this night is a night of judgment for them this night is a night of judgment for them i say it again this night is a night of judgment for them. this night is a night of judgment i command judgment for them i command judgment for them shake it, take it, take it. judgment for them judgment for them any human agent i say it responsible for your pain i command judgment for them while we ask the sick people to come out please if you came here trusting god for healing now is your moment while they are doing that please let's have all the prayer requests just something has happened to her just carry her and put her aside somewhere make your way to the front quickly please organize yourself now is the time for healing very quickly while they are doing that please all of you write your request listen hold on please I allow you to switch off your switch on your phones if you need to and call your loved ones to forward their request for you please you can type it quickly and send it here it's not enough that you've written your request please if you even know the request of some others you can write it and put their names because we are going to pray for those requests hallelujah you move mountains you cause walls to fall help me you perform miracles there is nothing when we stand here only because you one more time you move mountains you cause walls to fall your power perform miracles. you perform me there is nothing that's impossible Worship team, you're going to help us. Look how many people have come to be healed. I thank God because God has found a place where he can communicate his healing power to his people. Now, we're going to be very, very fast. This is not for the rest of us to be distracted. Everyone, you should be writing your prayer request and you should be praying. Because after this session, there's going to be a massive impartation. There is, there is need for grace and unction for us. And so we're going to pray. Hey, Jimmy, please come help me. We're going to be praying for the sick. Please, listen. It doesn't matter who prays for you, whether myself or hey, Jimmy, there's a corporate anointing, okay? So we're praying for you. Um, the moment they pray for you, don't leave one line and come and join another one. Just a touch. You don't even have to say what is wrong with you. If we ask you, that's all right. If we don't, please. If there's a prophetic word, you will be given. If you are not given any word, some of you, when I touch you, you now get angry because I didn't prophesy. Look, let me tell you something. This thing, you don't do it just the way you want to do, at least not for me. Are we together? So, it has, if there is no word for you, just believe. And then when hands are laid on you, don't just go back to your seat smiling. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. If you have to go to the hospital, then you should go to the hospital for test. Are we together? And if there are still people sitting down and not coming out because of the crowd, please make sure you join them. There is a reason why we lay hands like this. I don't do this in other meetings, but then so that we can make contact. Worship team, help us do the best you can. God bless you. Father, let there be miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. Hold on, please. How many months pregnant are you? Eight months. We have to pray. I'm seeing them cutting you. CS, but we have to pray for you. They gave me the list. They gave you the list. Yes, yes. Do you believe God can turn things around? Yes. Cry. 
there is a God that we serve. Immediately I looked at you. I saw them cutting you with a knife. Huh? Don't cry. I don't know what the doctor said, but in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, there will be a miracle for you. The baby will adjust to his normal position and he will come out the way he should come out like the Hebrew women. In the name of Jesus Christ, a supernatural miracle is happening to you right now. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Go ahead. God bless you. you when I pray for you, go back to your seat. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed right now. Don't know how, but you did it. In the name of Jesus. And we're standing here. She's carrying a child, please. Only because you made it. And we're standing here. Carry the baby, please. Only because you made it. And we're standing here. Only because. Please, if, someone, if someone is backing a baby as they are laying hands on the person, ushers, please help so that. Because you move the mountains. Lord, you move the mountains. Lord, you move the mountains. Lord, you move the mountains. Yeah. And you cause the walls to fall. Hallelujah. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. The meeting is still on. In the name of Jesus. I declare that every power that wants to stop my testimony, the Lord rebuke you. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. You are doing yourself good when you are praying. You are doing yourself good when you are praying. You must testify. They're singing that every power, every I thing must come down. So you pray. Let her go now. Out! 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 Go! Are you praying? my turn to testify in this season and every power that will stop me from testifying I come against it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus come on shout it inside and outside in the name of Jesus every legal access that the devil has over my life and over my family by the blood of Jesus 
that access is broken lift your voice and pray 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 every access please make sure you are praying this is part of the meeting every legal access the devil has over my life by the blood of the eternal covenant by that which Christ has done on the cross I come against it in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. My door to the next level. Hear the word of the Lord. Be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Command that door to open. The access point to the next level of my life and destiny. I command you to be open. I command you to be open. Revelation 3 verse 8. I have set before you an open door. No man can shut it. Are you praying? Shake it, take 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 On your feet as you stretch your hands on this prayer request lord it must be turned to a testimony lift your voice and pray i'm praying on your request there is a covenant of answered prayer in this house we invoke that covenant my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing which is gone from, from my lips. Shake it, take 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 it, Lord, have respect for the covenant in this house. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Let there be miracles. Supernatural miracles. Breakthroughs. 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 Shepo koto pekete. Ekete koto shoto koto. Makata pakata rekete. Rekoto so pekete kete kete. Shake it, 
Hallelujah. Join me shouting loud amen in the name of Jesus. Is that the best in the name of Jesus? The Bible says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Parakatakata. I tell you, fire is burning in this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every request that has been dropped before the God of heaven, we turn it into a testimony now. We turn it into a testimony now. Be turned into a testimony now. Be turned into a testimony now. Between now and the next miracle service, strange answers, strange answers, strange answers, strange answers. The way I'm walking upon this prophetically, in the name of Jesus, that's how you will walk upon every challenge. I step upon it prophetically. Everything that has mocked God, as I step upon it, as help them please, as I step upon it by prophecy, I decree in the name of Jesus that that's how you rise above the challenges. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There will be a drastic impartation here right now. Just five minutes and we're done. Drastic impartation. Listen. The anointing that is coming upon you is an anointing upon your gift. It's time for what you carry to speak. Lift your hands everyone. In the name that is above all names. At the count of three. My God a massive impartation. One. Two. Three. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive that impartation. Upon your gift. That impartation. All over this building. Is yours for the taking. It's yours for the taking. Produce results. Produce results. Produce results. Hallelujah. Listen. The unction for supernatural results. In the name of Jesus. That your results are not ordinary. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic office. And I command at the count of three. Let it fall like rain supernatural results one two get ready three take it take it take it take it supernatural ministry supernatural business supernatural family oh, oh, oh. help me Of results you have not seen in your life your business and your ministry I prophesy to you go and produce that result from today go and produce that result from today from today I prophesy it I program it upon your spirit go and catch fire whatever has refused to work in your life you have tried and tried and it has refused to work by this unction tonight we force it to work in the name of jesus you hear me all those trusting god for jobs you have done everything you know to do the door is not opening in the name that is above all names go and get your miracle job go and get your miracle job Go and get your miracle job. Every family going through stress and tension. You don't even know what to do. 
I pray right now the force responsible for the pain in your family tonight judgment upon them judgment upon them judgment upon them judgment upon them hear me every idea every concept you need to rise to the next level of your life i pray for you in your dream in your sleep through visions may those ideas be revealed to you help them please I want to pray for students now. The kind of exams you have never written in your life, the kind of CGPA, the kind of breakthrough, take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Take it now. Take it now hear me every spirit that makes you blank when you are writing exams it comes under fire now it comes under fire now Whoever is holding your breakthrough, the key to the next level of your life, in the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, they must look for you. I prophesy it. They must look for you. Hear me? You will not look for them. They will find their way and look for you. I pray for you. Everyone here, who has developed his gift what you need is for god to send those who have what it takes to honor it i pray for you listen hear me there is a way you can preach before men who don't need your grace they will rubbish your ministry and make you look like an idiot there is a way you do business in the presence of those who don't even have what it takes to value what you carry but i'm praying for you there is an unction that directs men only to those who can pay for what they carry. Rabbi, help him, help him, help him, help him, help him, help him. In the name of Jesus, that grace, may that anointing direct you right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Everything that has refused to grow here, whatever god has given you that has refused to grow in the name that is above all names i command it to grow now i command it to grow now i command it to grow now let me speak over your finances many of you have given many of you have sown seeds but the harvest is being trapped somewhere I pray for you the force that releases the harvest of men I command that force to be at work for you now 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 hallelujah whatever covers your glory for men to see and bless you you are walking physically but it's ikabo the glory is covered as a young lady you are beautiful but there's nobody to say i want to marry you i command that fail covering your glory be open now be open now be open now be open now arise shine arise shine arise shine hallelujah 
two more prophetic words and we're done it says and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way in this season you need direction everything is not the way to go hear me please hear me there are people right now your bailout is to know what god wants you to do that he told you to do it yesterday does not mean he's still saying do it you need a fresh instruction i open your spiritual ears your sense of perception your sense of perception your sense of discernment be open now be open now finally I pray for you everything that is upon this ministry is supposed to show in your life so if there is honor honor is when God positions men who discern what you represent and openly celebrate it it's called honor honor is not something you lobby for it's not a political position he said you shall call the sons of Aaron and you shall take some of your honor and give them Joshua sorry I want to pray for you listen do you know what honor is let me tell you the truth honor is better than money money can give you things but it may not give you honor honor is when men can rise up and fight for you because they want to preserve what you represent it's called honor it says and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren there are people who do not have honor in their life let me tell you how you know there is no honor in your life there is no helper honor is when men can stand before you and say before you touch him you must touch us honor when a ministry does not have honor you beg for everything you pay for everything you explain everything honor is when men god puts men at the gates to plead your cause you are there praying and somebody is clearing any bad air about you any bad impression about your ministry there is always a voice to say no the hand of god is upon them it's called honor i pray for you what has made you fight alone when things go wrong you explain alone nobody to help you listen this is not about prosperity this is about the ministry of men i have seen this in my life there is such a thing called the gift of men where god will raise men strangely everywhere you go that there must always be a man to advocate for you it's an unction otherwise whenever things go well or go wrong you pay for it by yourself whether things go bad or things go well you pay for it it's because that honor is not there are we together lift your hands i want to pray for you receive that prayer from the depth of your spirit because it will change your life the grace that god has put by covenant upon this house he said that i he entered a covenant with david that there will never be a man the throne will never lack a man i pray for you at every point of your life those who must arise for you i bring them into your life through the mantle of honor through the mantle of honor may that anointing come upon you now let it come upon you now in your going out in your coming in be honored be honored listen everywhere you enter that grace that distinguishes men let it come upon you hallelujah jesus we bless you jesus we lift up your name jesus we lift up your name jesus we lift up your name yeah. give us five minutes please everyone no moving around
there are people here who need to give their lives to Christ. Hear me. The Bible says that this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life and that this life is in his son. Please pay attention, concentrate, no moving around. It says he that has the son has eternal life. There are two groups of people right now. I want you to rush out here quickly. Those who have never committed their hearts to Jesus. You have never at any point in your life surrendered totally. I don't care how many times you have come for altar call. You have not made a genuine decision for Jesus. Number two, there are those who have given their lives to Christ. But the pressures and the vicissitudes of life have pushed you to a point where you have derailed in your walk with God. And you are saying, man of God, I need restoration. Wherever you are, please don't waste our time. Our time is gone. The Lord is calling you right now. And I want you to make a genuine commitment. Rise up and walk to the front right now. Rise up and walk to the front right now. Inside and outside. God bless you. People are coming. God bless you. People are coming. Please clear the way for them run like there's fire on the mountain in all the overflows all those following us online you may not be able to come out but prepare your heart to make this prayer with us God bless you God bless you God bless you go ahead and say today is the day I will make a decision for Jesus there are still people God is asking to come out don't be ashamed make your way to the front no matter what you have done there is a new beginning for you you're deserving of more. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you so much. For answering this call i'd like you to lift your right hand to heaven if you are still joining them please make your way it's not too late we are not reciting a poem this is a serious prayer that will determine your eternal destiny say after me very clearly say lord jesus those online followers say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me and you shed your blood for my sin this night I accept you as my savior and I receive eternal life into my spirit the power of sin and Satan is broken over my life forever from today I'm a child of God I'm saved I'm born again in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted father thank you for this once nobody can come except you draw them I pray that this that they have done as simple as it looks oh God I pray that this will be the reason for them to not only spend their eternal destiny with you but to live victorious lives here on earth in the name of Jesus Christ every power of the flesh of sin of Satan is broken over your life from today you move forward ever and backward never in Jesus name amen and amen thank you so much for making this most noble prayer I like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they will have your details and they will, will communicate you in due course. God bless you. Appreciate them coming on here very quickly. Hallelujah. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.